Okay, in this video I want to present to you some things to think about that are in a Catherine, Catherine Mansfield's story, Mansfield's story of the fly, um, that are like pegs or items that you should recognize as being in the story to give you a clue to, as to how to interpret the story. For example, uh, think of um, <clears throat> the setting. It's inside uh, a wooden, uh, an office full of wooden furniture. Uh, you have a green leather chair that someone sits in. Uh, you have the light and the warmth there. All of this seems to be uh, uh, hinting towards uh, plant growth, the, the natural growth of an organism. Uh, you know, the wine that is given to uh, the old struggling man is referred to as a healing el elixir. It's, it, uh, it travels through him and when it hits his brain, it, uh, it helps him think, but it's referred to as nutty. All right. Um, the the boss when he sits down, he plants himself in his chair. Um, so, you know, there's also reference at the beginning of the story about uh, you know the the mind clinging to hope or memories as as a as a tree clings to its leaves. So you have this sort of imagery there to help you think of plant growth, natural growth. Uh, the name of the old man that visits the boss is Woodyfield. He's enthralled by gardens, by plants, by by trees. You know, he he tells the boss this. So, you need to be thinking along those lines. What does it mean when an author is comparing two men to mature plants? All right. Now, in light of that, think of how a mature plant is going to propagate. Think of a tree. How is it? It's going to produce a nut, some sort of acorn, an, an oak tree producing an acorn. The acorn falls from its limb and hits the floor and the uh, and, 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 and grows in the ground to become a new tree and, and this is how the tree propagates, right? But what happens if that um, small tree, the little acorn, that seed never comes out of the ground, never grows, never it dies in fact in the ground, and you see both of these men have their sons in the ground. So um, there's something to be said about that natural growth imagery that's there. Um, you know that those two the two men are, are both similar in their situation. Uh, both have lost sons okay both have worked there at the business they're kind of close in age so you are t you should understand that you need to you need to uh, um, compare these men against each other okay one they both end up forgetting stuff at the end right so uh, although one views himself as healthy maybe he's not so healthy maybe he in fact he's as sick as the one in front of him that is struggling with life in general now physically going out once a week right uh, and the boss is still pushing ahead in his business, but is he as healthy as it seems? He's he's to be compared with the old man. They're both in, in such parallel situations that you should um, actively pursue a comparison between the two. Um, so that leads me to su to uh, to suggest to you what elements do these men have that can be used to compare themselves with each other? For example, they they both are struggling with memories. All right. Um, now, if you if you if you just take the idea that the memory is how the self remembers itself, how you view yourself as a self is your collection of memories of yourself. When you start struggling with this, you, you begin to lose your identity. Uh, so they're they're both struggling with that. Now, having children helps carry on this, especially a son, which is going to be the image of the father. So you should also see that there's an idea of identity loss happening here. Um, now. Following this idea that the fathers are in parallel situations, uh, why don't you look into the people that surround these fathers? Um, are they not uh, sterile and impotent in terms of um, manlyhood? You have an old servant uh, looking after the boss, and you have uh, daughters, not sons, but daughters looking after uh, Woody Field. So maybe what they surround themselves with can uh, also help you draw meaning out of the story. All right. Um, now, sometimes an author will put an element in the story that just seems weird. For example, Woody Phil talks about going over and, uh, across the channel to Europe to see uh, the, the, the grave of his son. And then he slips into talking about how his daughter stole a, a jar of theft from the foreigners. These, these uh, people not to be trusted with, all right? Uh, they're not like us. They're, they're sort of an, an opposition mode here, but these... Foreigners were charging so much for the jam that my girls thought we would just steal it to get back at them. And um, so there's a theft that's introduced to the story. So let me ask you, did the author just want to talk about jam because she was she didn't know what to write about for the next three paragraphs or so? No. 
I, I don't think jam has anything to do with it. I think a theft does. Can you see that there was a theft that happened here? Who had something stolen from him? Uh, they both did, didn't they? When they're in the war, stealing their sons. Okay, so when when you recognize that two characters are in a parallel situation here, um, you can play with that and, and try to get meaning out of it. Uh, again, another thing is just the, the idea that they're forgetting. They're forgetting. Well, they're losing their memories. Okay, they're losing the images they have of the life behind them that that defines themselves in the present and the life in the future. Um, but the old man has a picture, doesn't it? Doesn't he? A picture of his son. But he goes to the picture. It's black and white. It's faded. It's not how he... He can't really recognize his son there. So even even with that picture, uh, you're given a symbolism of a faded memory, a wrong memory, uh, something being lost. He, he, he's not uh, recognizing this. He's not comfortable with it anymore. Uh, this is not... He's thinking to himself, perhaps, this is not my son. Well, anyway, so what about this fly? All right? What is the fly? The fly is a picture of the, the man, the boss. All right, let me. That's my interpretation of this because what is the parallel structure here? The fly goes through some crises. Who in the story? Who else went through crises? Life-threatening crises. Well, not the son. Yes, but the son died, and it wasn't a repeated thing. It's the man, okay? Because the man goes through the first crisis when he gets the letter. He tells you he was stunned. Everything shattered. Then he fought back and cleansed himself from this dark, the stark, uh, gloomy event that covered him, that blotted out his clarity, like ink um he covered cleanse himself he's ready to go again and guess what boom another drop on his head right and this time it's from woody field oh i remember i wanted to tell you something i saw your son's grave the, the second drop of ink falls on the boss and he's trying to clean himself up and does he is he able to do it well in a way because the very activity of watching the fly he's he's mirroring this see he's doing it in a parallel structure and what life is doing to him he's doing to the fly i hope you saw that uh, but how does it all end up? The fly dies. So what does this tell you about the boss? He's in the process of dying. And the very fact that he can't even remember what he was talking about is not catharsis. It's not healing. It's the beginning of the death for him, so, uh, psychologically. Um, so now, if we interpret it that way, what might this be saying about the human bonds we hold so dear? What, what might this be saying about the community of the self? We think of the self as just, hey, it's just me, right? But wait a minute, when you get married, when you have children... Or when you look back at your brothers and your parents, you realize uh, they're all part of me. And when they die, a part of me dies. Uh, what might Mansfield be saying about that? So you got to run with that as far as like, what is this really saying? But what I'm trying to give you in this short video is just some of the actual elements in the story that could help you begin to piece together a possible interpretation.